Hello and welcome everyone to the April edition of our Facebook Live series. My name is Heath Einstein. I'm Dean of Admission at Texas Christian University. And we are thrilled that you have joined us this evening or this morning or this night, depending on where in the world you're coming from. Um, and it's so great to have people from all over. I see Amelia from Colorado Springs and Mary from nearby in Bedford. And we've got Liz joining us from Connecticut and New York. I don't know how you can be in two places at one time, but somewhere in the tri-state area, Liz is joining us. Emily down in Montgomery, Alabama. And Jenna all the way from Paris. And I don't know if that's Paris, Texas or Paris, France, but I'm going to pretend it's Paris, France because that's just so lovely, especially at this time of year. So welcome, everybody. Um, this session this evening is on a very special topic, our fantastic, our vaunted, our um, just famous first year experience programs. Um, and joining me this evening is the lovely, the talented, the brilliant Dr. Aaron Wilson. Hey, Aaron, how are you? Oh, my goodness, that welcome. I'm going to have to come more often. I'm good, Heath. Thanks for having me today. Of course. Well, um, anytime we do an admission program, we start with a land acknowledgement because the space, space where we are is very special. Um, and so we respectfully acknowledge all Native American peoples who have lived on this land since time immemorial. TCU especially acknowledges and pays respect to the Wichita and affiliated tribes upon whose ancestral historical homeland our university is located. And for those who have been to campus, perhaps you've seen it. If you haven't been to campus, I would encourage you to see it. There's a beautiful monument between Reed Hall and Jarvis Hall that commemorates the Wichita and affiliated tribes, and we are most grateful. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things TCU tonight. The focus is going to be on our first year experience programs, um, most notably orientation and frog camp, but there is other, um, there are other aspects of the first year experience um, that we can talk about. Um, and of course, anytime we gather together, um, on these Facebook Live events, we could end up talking about anything related to the world of TCU admissions or college admissions or TCU. So really, whatever is on your mind will eventually be fair game, but we do want to focus on that. Um, today's a pretty special day, as it turns out, with respect to these programs, because about two hours ago, we opened up registration for orientation and for Frog Camp. And so if you are an admitted student or the parent of an admitted student, you probably um, have experienced this already. Um, that is if you have submitted your enrollment deposit and that is a requirement in order to register. Um, so you have to have deposited to, um, to demonstrate that you intend to enroll at TCU this uh, upcoming fall. Um, but there may be other questions from other people. And we know that in the audience, we also have high school juniors and current college students who are thinking about transferring. So we hope that our conversation tonight really touches on um, the full range of that, those first year experience programs and how they might pertain to you. So Dr. Wilson, um, just wanted to throw it your way to see if there's anything that you wanted to start us off with um, or just say hello and that's okay too. And then, um, and then I'll make a few remarks and then we can throw it open for questions. So what, what say you? Yeah, I love it. Absolutely. Well, as he said, my name is Dr. Erin Wilson, and I'm the Senior Director of First Year Experiences here at TCU. So yes, you heard that right. Here at TCU, we care so much, not just about every student, but we really want to make sure that your first year experience is something that's incredibly special and transitions you from high school to college so that we make sure that you get through here successfully. So we really have honed in and focused on creating programming around exclusively first year students. We have lots of programming for everybody else, but tonight we're talking about you, whether you're coming or um, will soon be coming, right, Heath? Yep. Uh, we know that we're able to do that. So it is our job to make sure that we have programs, whether it's leadership or frog camp, which is um, our extended orientation um, camp or orientation itself. We also have have service 
service learning and so many different components that we make sure we cater and curate experiences for just our first year students. Um, in that, we, like I said before, make sure that you are able to transition smoothly or as smoothly as possible into our into your new frog horn frog community. And that's what my job is. It's so much fun. Students always keep me on my toes, um, but I absolutely love all of our students. But first year students have a special place in my heart. Well, and I think there's a really good chance that if you come to TCU, you are going to have um, some experience with Dr. Wilson. And that is a great thing because she's incredible. She is um, she is lit. She is fire. She is I'm I'm a child of the '80s in California, so I say rad. My my kids think I'm crazy. I think you're rad, Aaron. Um, oh, thank you. Like whatever it is that is your uh, term du jour, that is what Dr. Wilson is. Okay, some people um, want to know about like what makes TCU so special, and it is really hard to sort of pin down. One of the um, statistics that I always throw out, and I know Chancellor Bashini always talks about, is our retention rate. We have a 91% retention rate at TCU. And when people ask why that is, I'm always quick to answer that I think we do a really good job of bringing students into the fold right from the get-go. Mm -hmm. It starts at orientation. And Absolutely. our orientation programs are great, right, Dr. Wilson? So can you tell folks a little bit about what's going to happen during those sessions? For sure. So orientation is all about you. We're going to have sessions that walk you through so many pieces, right? If you still have questions about financial aid, if you need to understand more about housing and selecting um, where you want to kind of live for the for your first year, um, we answer just about anything, how to get connected. And then for me and most of and the, one of the things that students really enjoy is they get to be led by orientation leaders who are students or students students just like them who have done all the things and are there to share all their knowledge, wisdom, and tricks. We even make sure that parents have special sessions during orientation so that you're able, I always like to tell parents, you turn into a mentor, right? A coach once they hit our campus. And so we set you up for the best possible coaching um, situation that you can have. So orientation, we make sure that you leave with your class schedule and kind of know what what that looks like. Um, it's really just your first introduction to campus. Um, and we just make sure you know so much when you leave. But also you're connected with another group. And that's one of your first spaces that you get to meet people. A lot of people meet their uh, new hall, their um, new roommate. They just kind of connect with each other and then later select that person. But it's one of the first stops of many that we create to make sure that you uh, find your people and really jump into the community here. And you made an interesting point earlier, Dr. Wilson, about if you still have questions about something like residence halls and a student might be asking, well, wait a second. Um, I'm filling out my housing questionnaire in early May, but, I, but then I uh, come to orientation later. But of course, remember, orientations occur throughout the, the summer. They actually start in May and it overlaps when you fill out your housing questionnaire. So it is possible to attend orientation even before you're filling out the questionnaire and certainly before you do your housing selection, right? For sure. Absolutely. That happens a lot, right? Because we want to make sure that you have options. We know summer is busy and that you're cramming in all those last opportunities to have fun during the summer. So yes, super flexible for you to be able to choose. While you must uh, attend orientation, we do everything we can to make it as flexible as possible so you're able to come to the one that you want. There are 12 first year orientations from which to choose. Mm -hmm. And there are three transfer orientations from which to choose. And um, don't fret because you will get into orientation. We require it of all of our uh, incoming first year students. And so um, it's possible that you went onto the site today to register right at four o'clock. And you can imagine it's not all that different from getting a hot concert ticket um, you might not get your very first choice even right away, but the portal will pop up a message that encourages you to select a different session if you don't get your first session. So yes, we try to be as flexible as possible, but know that of course, 
Um, a lot of people are trying to register. And so we do um, encourage people to exhibit some level of patience here. We will get to everybody. Everyone will come to orientation. Um, of that, you can be, um, be confident. Um, OK, so everyone comes to orientation. Not everybody comes to Frog Camp, but most people sure do. Um, in fact, 81% of our first year students will go to a Frog Camp. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Frog Camp? What is it and why should a student go? Absolutely. So we talked about orientation kind of being your first introduction of what's happening here. And then Frog Camp really takes it to the next level. Frog Camp is all about building community. You get a small group, you are, um, you get to hang out with faculty and staff who are just as excited that you're here uh, um, as well, and they wanna create connections with you. Um, during that time, you learn about TCU traditions. We walk through things, again, that you want to know. You get to ask tons of questions to other facilitators who are um, students currently at TCU, upper class students, and so it's a really, really great way to again build another community as you can see they build up on each other right you've got a small group when you're at orientation so that's at least 10 people that you know through coming through the gate right you go to frog camp and depending on the size of your group some are 10 some are a little bit smaller some are a little bit larger but you've got all those people that you know plus the the upper class students so you've now created an entire network of people and you've only gone to you you hadn't even started yet so we create lots of opportunities for you to do that frog camp is so much fun and i love that it's our extended orientation so you've got even more time to to build your squad squad goals right there you go i love it <laughs> um now you probably don't know this dr wilson but we okay. have uh, started a tradition here on our monthly facebook lives of telling some dad jokes so I'm going to pause here for a dad joke. Um, I'll, a I'll ask it to you since you're on screen okay. with me. We'll okay. see if you can get this one. Um, this is in honor of our friend Jenna, who joined us from Paris. Uh, and the question is, what do a tick and the Eiffel Tower have in common? What do a tick and the oh. Eiffel Tower have in common? A tick and the Eiffel Tower mm -hmm. have in common. That was hard. Remember, like where, remember where Jenna joined us from? Uh-huh. Let's see. Paris. We know Paris. Uh-huh. But like they don't okay. teach you that during your doctoral I know. program. He I know. Sorry, Dr. Wilson. Okay. <laughs> the answer is they're both Paris sites. Oh. <laughs> A tick and the Eiffel Tower are both Paris sites. I thought you would appreciate that. I should have gotten that. That was ah chef's kiss. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, really. And shout out to Jenna again. Um, you were the inspiration for that one. Um, okay, let's let's jump back into it. Um, we did speak about housing before, um, and just uh, this will be a little tease because next month in our May session, we're going to be talking about housing. 95% um, of first year students live on campus, mm -hmm. and we actually we require a, we have a two year residency requirement. Those 5% of cases where students live off uh, or don't live on campus their first year, that's uh, those students are given dispensation for a variety of reasons, typically because they live locally. Um, but for the most part, everybody is living on campus. And that is a huge part of, of um, building the community at TCU. Um, and I'm wondering, Dr. Wilson, if you can talk about the sense of community here, because that very much um, flows into this, I, this, this the first year experience, right? Absolutely. To me, that's one of the most magical pieces. Besides TCU is beautiful. We have amazing uh, teachers here and staff who truly, truly love TCU. One of the most amazing pieces is the community. From the time you step on campus, you see people waving and laughing and speaking with each other. Um, you just feel at home. I've had many students who just said, I did my tour and I just felt like this was home. And we do everything to kind of make sure that that's the piece that you feel. Um, there's other connection points that we have, whether it's in the classroom with you taking a first year experience class or um, just in sports, in um, just so many different areas. We just really believe in community. In addition to that, we have some really great traditions from the tree lighting where everyone brings um, their family and different pieces like that to 
family weekend to make sure that families also feel included in the excitement of first year and um, all of the other times that you're here. TCU just it, it's a community and it goes beyond just the the TCU area. One of the things that makes me so happy and I always tell this story, um, but when I first came to TCU, I had just done a presentation and I had on purple and I ran to grab something out of the grocery store. I'm in the freezer aisle and a guy comes up to me and goes, go frogs. Now before <laughs> I chopped him in the throat, I realized <laughs> that he was just excited that I was connected with TCU. And that's what you feel, not just on campus, but anywhere you go in Fort Worth. And that to me makes it magical that even the folks of Fort Worth love us, but we also make sure the students know that they have to make sure that uh, Fort, that we make sure Fort Worth knows how much we love them back. I love that story. That's that's absolutely hilarious. And um, and not at all surprising, right? <laughs> if, you, if you know our, if you know the community. Um, one one final thing about about housing, uh, and that it, and I'm not a huge fan of rankings, uh, except for when they make us look good. And uh, the Princeton Review says that we have the number four residence halls in the in the country. Yes. Um, which and if you spend any bit of time in the residence halls, I think you will um, find that to be uh, a fairly accurate assessment. Um, okay, Dr. Wilson. Um, we've already been talking far too long without even getting to the questions. So let's move right into those. And we have a bunch that have been submitted and please continue to submit questions throughout the hour. We're gonna go as long as we can um, to answer as many questions as possible. Um, but there were a couple of questions that came through on Instagram because we, we posed uh, the uh, question ahead of time. If anyone has questions for us, they could they could let us know in advance. And there were two that were very similar um, that I want to start with, both having to do with parent involvement at our orientation and frog camps. Um, so um, the real Chrissy Hartley asked, do parents typically attend orientation? And Emily Daniel, e. Daniel Leff asks, um, do parents stay with us at the hotel during frog, frog camp? Um, so and Emily, I think, is a student asking, do, would her parents say? So a little bit of different, there, there are probably different answers there. Um, mm -hmm. Do parents participate in orientation? Do parents participate in frog camp? What would you say to those? I love those questions. So the first one is that absolutely parents are welcome at orientation. It's up to you completely, but parents are absolutely welcome. Um, I believe that we are now back to two guests. So you can bring um, two guests that you would like to up to two guests that you would like to accompany you to orientation. So we understand that this is a new experience and you may not want to do it alone, but even folks, if you don't have one or two people that you want to come with you, will still make sure that you don't feel like you're alone during your orientation experience. There's plenty of people here to make sure that you have what you need during that time. So the question about frog camp is no, your parents will not be staying with you during frog camp. Um, so <laughs> right? remember, we want our parents to move and to transition into that coach role. Um, and so during frog camp, you won't be staying with your parents. Um, um, it depends on what frog camp you go to. I didn't speak about that before, but we have some frog camps that are out of state. We have other frog camps that are in Fort Worth that are dedicated to making sure that you get to know the city. Um, we have other frog camps that give you kind of um, a summer camp feel, uh, which is one that's challenge that scares me a little bit. I am not outdoorsy, but we got <laughs> people from you, you don't do you don't do Can the grimy games. I'm not that outdoorsy, Heath. I don't know. I knew that was hard for you to ascertain. So I wanted to make sure. Uh, <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> we have travel camps like this year. Um, I'm going to shout out Becky Brokaw because I saw that she's from Anchorage, Alaska. And we're actually taking a group of students for their frog camp experience to Anchorage. Um, we've got experiences where you don't even know where you're going to go <laughs> before you get there called mystery. So whatever the case is, we really want it to be a time where you connect with other students. And so while we love, love, love our parents, frog camp is a no, orientation is a big old yes. Absolutely. I do want to make one note, and that is that for guests only, not the students, but for the guests at orientation, there is a $25 overnight fee. Yes. Um, 
but 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 definitely everyone is welcome. The other thing I wanted to note um, about frog camps, and I'm so glad that you brought this up, Dr. Wilson, that we have varying locations, mm -hmm. is that a couple, well, gosh, maybe five years ago now or more, um, the university said, we think frog camp is so important that we do not want cost to be a barrier for students to, mm -hmm. to attend. So for our Texas frog camps, there is no fee for students. And this is an, a tremendous investment by the university, but we just think it's that important in helping students to build community here at TCU. And what you will find very frequently is that students will graduate from TCU saying the best friends they made at the university are those they made at frog camp or at orientation. It, these, um, the network begins to be developed early on and those bonds are strong and they last a long time. So, um, so that is really one of the primary reasons why, why we do that. Absolutely, Heath. Um, one of my favorite things is to run into people who were my campers at Frog Camp and see them together. Uh, I just had a pair of guys that are graduating this year and they became roommates for like, like for the entire time they were here. And it was literally because they met at Frog Camp. So it is an a, a opportunity you don't want to miss if you get the chance um, to sign up for whichever one you want. You definitely want to go to Frog Camp. And uh, I can speak from also from that staff perspective, having, um, you know, worked in those small groups in the past, it is really neat to see how students um, evolve over their four years at TCU. And then beyond, I have students of mine, and this will tell you how long I've been at TCU, who are married now. Um, and these are my students who were at, at like my little frog camp babies. And it's so great to see. So um, yes, it's, it's great. Um, I want to ask a question, uh, uh, not me, I'd like to pose a question to you that was asked by uh, uh, Mia Mocha on Instagram. And it's so, it's such an important question. It's, is it hard meeting new people and having friends? You know, we talk about, yeah, this is, this is great. And everyone's going to make their lifelong friends and you're going to, you know, you, but that not, that doesn't necessarily happen instantaneously for everybody. So can you talk about how the, the, relationships between students develop and how your programs really try to you know, create that experience. For sure. So you're absolutely right, Heath. While some people meet their lifelong friends, the people who are in their weddings, and sometimes they now graduate students together, we do have some people that it takes a little longer for you to create those meaningful connections. But we do everything we can to make sure you have opportunities to do it. We here at TCU have over 300 student organizations that you're able to join and meet new people. We have other opportunities um, in the class room and I recommend every student take university life studies. Um, I'm one of the instructors. Heath, have you ever taught university life studies? I, I, you know, I have at a different institution, but not at TCU. We need to get you in the classroom. Your students would love you, but you have the opportunity to meet a classroom full of students that are learning the university together. We have leadership opportunities, tons here on campus. Um, whether you are deciding to um, welcome new students to campus or join Student Government Association through some things like Frog Aids, there are so many ways to get to know people on campus. We even have our intercultural center where they have amazing programming to help you get connected. And so there are just so many opportunities for you to get to know other students. And then the opportunities are there, but I talk to a lot of students about the opportunities being there and you have to take them, okay? So the good news is most of the people, I would say 99.999% of the people that you're gonna meet here on campus, if you say hi, they'll say hi back, right? And so there's kind of, there's two pieces to that, right? We make sure you have all the opportunities you need to connect with people, but then we also try to make sure that you have the tools you need to gain the confidence to walk up and make those connections. Love it, love it, love it. You're absolutely right. Um, TCU, it has got to be the friendliest campus in America. <laughs> I've, been to, I've been to a lot of them and, and there's nothing like our, our campus. For sure. Um, okay, Stephanie asks, if a student doesn't commit to TCU until May 1, which we know is the national candidate reply date, mm -hmm. students have a full you know, month left basically to make their decision. 
Um, will there still be open spots for orientation and frog camp um, since registration is already open? Mm, that's a fantastic, fantastic question. I always expect that one to, uh, to come, right? I was ready for you in that question. <laughs> so the answer is orientation, yes. We make sure that there's a space for everyone at orientation. When you're ready to sign up, we'll be here, right? For orientation, for the most part, um, because you're required to go. For Frog Camp, um, there spaces fill up really quickly for the student for the folks who were hopping on there today at 4 uh, p.m. Central time, right? You know how quickly those spaces moved. But more likely than not, we will have some spaces that are still left at probably our local Texas camps. So feel free to just hop on um, online, take a look. And if you have any questions, you can always look at the website that we provided a little bit earlier for Frog Camp and get connected with us and we can answer questions in the future. That's great. Okay, so Steph asks a really interesting question and it sort of piggybacks on what we were talking about before about parents staying at um, orientation because on the registration form, it asks if the guest wants to stay in the residence hall mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. um, what would your recommendation be? Do you have a recommendation? Is it better to stay and get the experience of being in a residence hall that would sort of mirror what your student will will have or is it better to just stay in a hotel or or, or what would you suggest i love that you asked that question i think it's a personal choice, right? Uh, I, I think back to um, when I went to orientation, that was not that long ago at all, as you can tell, right? Um, but my parents stayed with me and for them, it was a fun experience for them to relive their residence hall like days, right? Um, for some parents, it's co more comfortable for you to be in a hotel, especially if you decide to stay a little longer than when orientation dates are and make a weekend of it. Fort Worth is a fun place to visit. And so some people just make it an experience. So I don't think there's one that's better than the other. You also wanna think a little bit about price point. Obviously the hotel is gonna cost you a little more to come to orientation. Um, and then I think like you referenced to before, it's $25, right? In order to make that reservation to stay in the residence hall. So I hope that helped you make your decision about what's best for you, but it really just comes down to personal personal preference. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. I don't know if you know the answer to this off, off the top of your head, but maybe even if you could approximate, because okay. Jinx asks about how many students will be in a frog camp. And we know that the size of the small group might be the same from camp to camp, but the size of the camp itself could vary gr greatly. Um, so do you have those numbers? I, I hate to put you on the spot that way, but maybe you know. <laughs> That's okay. I love being put. No, I don't love being put on the spot. But for <laughs> you, Keith, I will be on the spot. So um, Alpine is one of our camps where students go to Colorado to you have fresh air and tons of fun in the mountains. I think we do about 100 students over the two camps that are able to go there. Um, for, mis uh, for our mystery camp and then for Alaska, there's about 24 students who are able to go to that one. I think that's pretty correct. Um, um, for our challenge A and B, there's about 300 um, to maybe 450 students, 450 students that are able to go to that one. And then um, our CASA, which is here um, really focused on Fort Worth. And then also All Stars, which is one that's a little sports focused. I love that aspect of that camp. I would say about 200, maybe 20, 24 students are able to have spots at that camp. So don't quote me on that, but I think I'm pretty close. I'm willing I, to be. I'm not quoting you, but that's but that's excellent. I love it. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, Dr. Aaron Wilson said on this date, on this time. <laughs> don't take screenshots, folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Peyton asks a really interesting question. I love this. If your out-of-state roommate and you are going to the same orientation or frog camp, are you able to room together? So let's say a student has selected their roommate already. They know who they're going to live with. Um, can, you, can you also be roommates at orientation or frog camp? Do we allow that? That's a fantastic question. So the answer is maybe, right? Uh, so we, we pull these 
uh, the information about roommates and people who will end up in rooms together in many different ways. And so the, the answer is probably more likely than not you won't end up, but it's, it's because we want you to have the opportunity to build, remember, squad goals, to build your network, to build your connections to people so that when you come here, you don't just know that one person, right? You know multiple people, so you feel connected, you feel excited and confident as you're moving forward. So the short answer is probably not. Um, it's not like it could never happen, but we like to make sure that you get connected with more than just the one person you know. I love this. The you got to make your network. That's that's uh, mm -hmm. your network mm -hmm. makes your net worth. We got we can come up with some like great tagline here. We need that on a shirt. He, yeah. I like that. Okay, good. We see we're just we're riffing here. I like it. We're actually we're riff ramming is what we're doing. <laughs> Bazu, okay. man. Bazu. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, next, we've got this is another great God, y'all are asking such great questions. I love it. Um, Janet asks if parents are planning to attend orientation when will the schedule be available that details the times of the parent activities? About how far in advance does that get set? I mean, I know that we're working on it right now. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have a sense of when that will be distributed? Uh, so yes and no. So we, um, so often I know for sure the department is working really hard to get those things nailed down. So I would just keep checking um, the orientation website that was up on the screen a little while ago, and it may be we may be able to get it back up there. But keep checking that space. Um, it should be coming up soon. Uh, April is a super, super wild time for us, but you, especially since orientations start to happen in May, you should be seeing that information soon. Another piece is that don't worry. I mean, you can check the website, but I know for sure that we work to make sure that you get an email that has some of that information on it pretty soon. Students just signed up for orientation starting today. So as we see the orientations that are happening, we make sure to get information out to your student at this point point. So that's kind of what the holdup has been to make sure that people get signed up. And then we send information corresponding to their orientation. I'm so glad you made that comment about April because it's just about time for another dad joke. Um, <laughs> so here's my question. If April showers, see what I did there, April? Okay, okay. If April showers bring May flowers, what do May flowers bring? What do May flowers bring? Huh? Allergies? <laughs> no, Mayflowers bring pilgrims. Oh my gosh! As soon as you said that, that popped into my head. That was so yeah. Thanksgiving. -y. I love. I know. It. I know. It's probably not the right time of year to ask that joke. I mean, to tell to tell that joke. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll save it. Okay, you can tell that at your Thanksgiving table. Um, okay. If, uh, let's see, Sonia asks, are there a set, this is a classic question. I'm surprised it's, it's taken us a half hour to get here. Are there a set number of classes for each orientation? Uh, this is like, I hear from so many students, I have to get to the first orientation or I'm never going to get wow. my classes. Um, wow. and, and I bet you we'd find out that there isn't much of a correlation between uh, graduation rate and orientation session. But let's, let's answer that question directly. Can students who don't attend the first two orientations still get classes? Yes, absolutely. That's what you're coming here for. So we have masterfully the folks who are working over in advising, which shout out to our advising folks that make sure to take care of you during orientation in that capacity. They make sure that we have enough classes that are spread out across the orientations for you to make sure that you get classes. Now, let me be honest with you. Let me move closer to the camera for this. Really look me in my eye. Your class schedule that you get may not be perfect, okay? You heard it here first. That was breaking news. There may be some eight o'clocks that are in there, right? So be prepared to be flexible. You will get classes. You will get the classes that you need to move forward, but understand that there are other students that have already registered, um, but we do everything we can that whether you come to the very first orientation or to the very last orientation that there will be classes for you to sign up for okay yeah love it love it love it have to underscore that point not everyone is going to be able to take their classes between 10 a.m and 2 p.m that okay? we we know that everyone wants that we get it 
but that might not happen for you and it's okay. We have awesome classes that happen before 10 a.m. and after 2 p.m. Just need to put that out there. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Carol Scott asks, do the students stay on cam on campus during orientation, which we know that, that they do. Yep. Um, and then do, do, like, how does it work if the parents stay on campus? Do they stay se separately from the students so they have their own experience? So can you talk about, like, how the parent and students connect during orientation, but also have their own programming? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So orientation, um, and we have some amazing folks at orientation. I got to shout out Jasmine um, and Emily who work to make sure that you all have a fantastic opportunity, right? So there are pieces of orientation that both um, parent or family, whoever is with you, your, your VIPs. Um, I love that one of our, somebody on campus says that, right? So I'm going to say it too. Your <laughs> VIPs who come with you, we make sure that you have the opportunity to do several things together. And then there are some sessions that sometimes just students go to. There are some sessions that just parents go to. Some of the most strategic and best uh, uh, combinations of parent and family that I've seen is sometimes they spread out to hit more than one session. Um, so they break up just organically themselves. But yes, you will have plenty of opportunities, whether it's uh, dinner in the dining hall or just kind of getting back together to uh, go over the things that you heard heard um, at orientation, there will be plenty of opportunities for you to kind of be back with your student or for you to be back with your VIP. Um, so yeah, there's plenty of spaces. We do make sure that there's programming. So if you want to come and uh, connect with people after orientation, you can still do that. And parents, you're free to kind of see um, some of the things around Fort Worth. Like I said, it's a really great um, place. And so yes, uh, make sure that as the information comes out in your emails, that you kind of just take a peek at that schedule and make some choices based on your preferences. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. Can you talk about um, what happens if a student is on a wait list for a camp? Angela's asking, because we know that there are students who mm -hmm. are open to going to whatever camp they can get into. And there are some students who really, really want to go to a particular yes. camp and they put themselves on a wait list. So how does that process work? Absolutely. So if you were able to hop on one of the wait lists, if you were signing up today, what that means is that if someone changes where they want to go, which is very possible um, to a space that has something open, if um, a student decides to no longer go to frog camp, um, if someone cancels, then we stay on top of the wait list and you will be contacted um, in a few weeks um, or as we see that the wait list list has a uh, change, we will specifically contact you to let you know that you've been moved from the wait list to that actual camp. So no stress. So if you don't hear from us, that means that you are still on the wait list. And I hate that that's the case. We have so many really great camps that everyone wants to go to all of them. And unfortunately, while we have space for everybody to go to a camp, we don't always have space for everyone to go to a camp like Alaska, right? So to uh, long story short, if you're on a wait list and we're able to bump you off of the wait list, we will reach out to you. That's our promise because we want every camp to be full to create the most opportunities for your student uh, or students to to make connections with people at Frog Camp. Love it. It's great. Okay. I want to just take one second to uh, pay homage to Dalene Von Niekirk, who is joining us all the way from South Africa, which is awesome. It is 1.39 a.m. in South Africa. So thank you so much for being with us. And we cannot wait to see you um, for orientation and Frog Camp as well. So awesome that you're with us. Okay. Uh, Kelly asks, what time do students need to arrive for Frog Camp because they want to book flights? And I know that the time differs potentially on the camp that they're coming to, right? For sure. You took the answer right out of my mouth. 
of heat is that the times really differ. So um, this is my promise to you. Um, if your student got signed up for a specific frog camp, which I'm sure that they did, you will be getting some information really, really soon about those times. Today was sign up, so we couldn't send it on the sign up day because we're all here making sure we man the phones and answer questions and do lives with Heath. But as soon as um, all of the things are signed up and we wrap up for today, um, in the next week or so, you should be getting some information about those sign up times, okay? Yep. And I know that for our Texas camps, I believe this is true, all of them start at one o'clock central time. Mm -hmm. um, it's the travel mm -hmm. camps that may, or the out of that state differ. camps that may have, that may be different. And it Absolutely. is, it is the expectation if you are coming to a frog camp, you stay for the entire frog camp. You have to be here for the beginning, stay mm -hmm. till the end. That is as much for everybody else as it is for you. We want to have a complete experience for everybody and you won't get as much out of it, nor will your um, your peers, if you're not there for its entirety. Um, okay, um, so that actually answers, there are, there are a couple questions that have to do with that. Um, Margaret asks, is there an academic advisor at orientation? So uh, of course, that's a huge piece of orientation is the class mm -hmm. registration and so forth. So can you talk a little bit about that process? For sure. So yes, you will get the opportunity to meet specifically with an academic advisor as you pick your classes. That is a hundred percent what their job is, is to make sure that you get into the classes that kind of make sense for your academic plan. So yeah, the short answer literally is absolutely. That is what our advisors stay and make sure throughout the summer that they're at every one of the orientations to give you the best counsel possible possible when you're choosing your classes. Awesome. Okay. So um, uh, Brenna asks, when will specific locations for frog camps be made available? And I'm, I'm guessing, I could be wrong about this, um, because most of them, if you look on our website, they, they're, they are known like where they're going to be in, in the city. I don't know if they mean like, if, if Brenna means like specific hotels or so yeah. and so forth. Um, and then of course, mystery destination um, you won't know till you get there, uh, right. which, is, which is sort of the, and you know, Dr. Aaron is so good because I will occasionally be like, okay, can you remind me where we're doing mystery again? And she's like, you can't get me. You can try, but you can't get me. Uh, so I know I am not important enough to know, to ever know when mystery is going to be. Um, or where it's going to be. I can tell you when it's going to be. We uh, but, do uh, keep it on lockdown, Heath. It is very serious over here. Oh, I bet. There aren't, isn't it true there are like maybe four people who know know about it? I wouldn't even say four, to be honest with you. There's probably just about three of us that know uh, mystery. So I promise I'm not going to tell anybody anything. Oh, so you are, you've already told me something, which is you are one of the people who know. Okay. <laughs> they good. swear it's the he like okay. we take an oath over here and everything. I don't even know if Chancellor Bashini knows. I got to talk to that guy. Maybe he knows. Um, okay. So uh, what about the other camps? About like the specific specifics? We might know what town it's in, but like um, when will they find out what, what hotel they're staying at, for example, or sure. campsite? So that one exactly is the same thing. So once you have signed up, which today was sign up, you will be getting some information really, really soon about specifics and schedules and even what to pack. We, what we've been doing this for a long while. And so we know lots of the things that you may ask and you'll get some information about those. Um, I think if, if you are just asking about ones that are not general or just figuring out what the camps are, again, our website has all of that information pricing, all kind of things that you will need um, to kind of make some decisions as well as dates. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Saba asks, do international students have a separate orientation? a really good question. We have some orientations that are uh, closer to the beginning of school and have one that is specifically for international students. I do believe that if you would like to come to any of the orientations, you are more than welcome to do that. But we really make sure that we have some specific ones because we understand travel, right? It is hard to come, to go, to come and go. So we do everything we can to make sure that your one trip here to your new home and new community at TC 
MCU is the only one that you have to take for that piece. But it's completely up to you. All students are welcome at every orientation. But we do make sure that we have one specifically to make travel um, and moving in easy for you. Outstanding. Okay. Uh, Kelly Baez asks, and hello, Kelly. It's so good to see you on here. We just spoke a couple weeks ago. Um, when should the health and immunization forms be filled out? And the answer there is in order to complete your housing questionnaire, you have to have all of um, the information into the health center. So you, the um, immunization forms need to be filled out. You don't necessarily have to have that done today in order to register for orientation in broad right. camp, but you will need that in order to, um, to get housing at TCU. So that's mm -hmm. going to be really important. Here's okay. one thing that I wanted mm -hmm. to point out while we were talking about forms. Yeah. Another one is if you have signed up for um, your frog camp, there are some forms that are in your specific account that you need to make sure that you sign. If you don't get those signed two weeks before camp, then some people from the wait list <laughs> may hop up. So make sure that you're staying on top of all of the forms that are required to come and do all of the cool things. Okay, that, that's excellent information. I've got a great question here from Krista that I bet a million people want to know the answer to. And yeah. that is, if there is a day between orientation and frog camp, you're planning to do these back to back, but there's a, oh, there's a, there's a day when there's nothing going on. Are you allowed to stay in the residence hall that day? Absolutely. So we know that that would be really tough for you to get a hotel room to come and go to frog camp. So we do have two sessions that allow us to do that. I believe it's session eight and session 11. Uh, session eight backs up to Casa A and then session 11 of orientation backs up to Casa C. So to answer your question, absolutely. You'll be able to stay and we'll even have some programming for you when you stay that extra day. So yeah, come on through. We got you taken care of. I'm very impressed that you have all of these dates and sessions memorized or if it, it's possible it's on a screen in front of you, but you're playing it off like you know it. Like, so super impressed there. Okay. Um, Annabelle asks, so do you get to choose the times for your classes or when you're at orientation or are you just signing up for the subject and then it's randomized? And I love this question Ooh. because I think so often, Aaron, because we live this every day, we assume that it, you know, it's just sort of second nature to us. But for students who are coming through this for the first time, they've never done this before. So can yes. you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I'm going to try my hardest. <laughs> so yeah. um, I am not an advisor by any means. I give good advice, but I'm not an <laughs> academic advisor. But from my understanding, th the answer is probably a combination of the two, right? So we understand that there's a path and there are specific classes that you need to take in order to graduate as soon as you are ready to graduate, right? So when you come Come to orientation, there will be classes that we look at and go, you need, and then there may be specific times that are attached to those. You may get a little bit of choice to go, oh, I'd rather, oh, a nine o'clock is available and it fits with this other piece. So it's really more about puzzle pieces mm -hmm. um, and fitting them together perfectly to make sure you have a schedule, then leaning on one instead of the other. Does that make sense at all? I hope that clarified that. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and you're right. It's working the puzzle. It's working mm -hmm. collaboratively with your advisor. Yep. It's looking at, you know, if your goal is to graduate in four years with a degree in political science or psychology or English, mm -hmm. these are the pieces that we're going to have to fit together during that time. Here's typically what happens for a student in the first semester. This is what yes. we would recommend. And then you do select classes. When you're done, when you've gone through the registration process, you will have a class at a specific time. Um, so you're not going to walk, walk into TCU in the fall semester, um, not knowing when your, when your classes are going to be. Absolutely so, not. Yeah. Yes. You'll be, you'll, you'll know exactly what your schedule looks like so that you can start planning on when to go to classes when you get here for the semester. Yeah. I love it. Um, okay. I'm just scrolling through. We've got so many good questions. We want to make sure, um, uh, that we get to everything. Um, okay. There, there are a lot of questions now that have to do a little bit more generally, like sort of zooming out away from the orientation and frog camp experience and just okay. some, um, and because I know we've got a lot of students here who are wondering about, okay, 
I haven't been admitted to TCU yet. What, you know, what's the process like for me? So I do want to mention, because we had a couple of students who asked questions about if they're on the wait list, what happens to them? And I don't mean wait list for frog camp and orientation, but wait list just to be admitted to TCU. Yes. Um, we have a, uh, a robust wait list because like most colleges, we never know exactly who's going to accept our offer of admission. Um, I am in the business of trying to guess the behavior of 17 year olds. And that is a pretty dangerous place to be. Tough. Uh, very tough. So um, at any moment we could be over, we could be under, and that's why we have a wait list because as we get closer to May 1, the national candidate reply date, we need to assess whether we're going to need to admit more students. As we sit here on the 6th of April, still a good three and a half weeks away from that May 1 deadline, I would say the, ch the chances are that if we move to the waitlist, we'll do so in a very limited way. And if we do that, it won't happen yet for another one to two weeks at least. Um, but these things change very rapidly. It's a fluid situation. If we don't get any deposits tomorrow and the next day, I could be singing a completely different tune. So stay with us. Stay tuned. If you want to come to D TCU, but you haven't been admitted yet, um, then just remain on the wait list. You definitely need to think about the colleges where you have been admitted and where you, frankly, are likelier to enroll. Um, but that doesn't mean you should give up hope entirely on TCU. And the other thing I want to mention to waitlisted students, and I have conversations at this time of year every day with students <clears throat> and parents who um, have students who are on the waitlist, um, and that is transfer admission is always an option. And we welcome 450 transfer students each fall, another 150 transfer students each spring. And many of those students were initially waitlisted as first year applicants, but remained um, gung ho to be at TCU. We remained in their hearts. And so they started at other institutions and then they reapplied to transfer to TCU. Um, mm -hmm. And so that is gonna be an option for you it may be no for now, but not necessarily no forever. So I definitely did want to um, make you aware of that. And if you are admitted off of the wait list at TCU, you will also come to orientation and you can also come to Frog Camp. Um, that, is, uh, that is a definite. We want to make sure that you participate in our first year experience programs. There have been some other questions um, in the chat about majors and changing majors and how, how can you do that? In the portal, if um, and this is specifically for admitted students, they've already deposited and they want to try to change their major. Um, in the portal, you can go in and make a request to change your major. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a guarantee because at this point in the cycle, we're not just looking at the total number of students who have deposited at TCU, but we're looking at the academic programs into which those students have deposited. And so it's going to be a decision that is based largely on space availability. So you may hear back from us that says, um, with a message that says you'll hear back, you will be notified within a few days or a couple of weeks um, when, when we can determine if we have space in those majors. I can tell you with certainty that there are some majors where we do not have any more space and I don't think it's likely we're going to have any more space between now and May 1. And then there are other majors where we do and that request will be granted pretty quickly. So that's the place to go. In the portal on the right hand column at the bottom, you're going to see major change request or something along those lines. You click that link um, and you'll have some choices there. Um, okay, scrolling through to see if there are other questions. Oh, um, there was a question about sorority recruitment and move in. Um, Dr. Wilson, the question had to do with move in day. Is it a different move in day for students who are going through panhellenic recruitment? And I know this is a little bit outside of <laughs> your purview. So if you don't know the answer to that, that's okay. I do know that, they, that those students come a little bit earlier, but, um, but I didn't know if you had anything to add about that. For sure. So I believe that that is the case, if that makes sense. Um, but I do know that those uh, that students who decide to um, participate are also able, we make sure that they're able to participate in another thing that we have for first year students, which is um, 
uh, Frogs First, which is yeah. when we have a special celebration for just you um, and make sure that, again, you get to know another small group, some more upper class students in your very first weekend when you get here. So I know that those things are inter uh, interwoven, if that makes sense, but I do believe that there is a move in for that. Don't quote me on that one either. I'm in first year, um, but our housing <laughs> folks do a very good job of making sure you get the info you need. So check those official TCU emails all the time. Absolutely. And um, and students who go through recruitment, um, of course, they would pick an orientation date and a frog camp that doesn't conflict. That's part of why we have yes. all these different options, because we know that there are some competing interests and we want students to be able to participate in everything, everything Absolutely. that they want to. Absolutely. Um, yes. So yeah, thank you for pointing out frogs first. That's a critical piece to, mm -hmm. um, to getting students into the fold, um, culminating with the chancellor's assembly. And then mm -hmm. we've got opening convocation at the beginning of the year. And they're all of these sort of rites of passage that occur. Mm -hmm. And um, if, if you participate in all of those things, you can't help but make these very strong connections. And I think that, you know, as I talk to students um, and parents, I think sometimes there are students who are a little bit fearful because they're coming into a brand new environment. Um, and what they often don't realize is that everybody is in that position. There is nobody who's coming to college for the first time at TCU who's already been to TCU for the first time. It's nobody's second time going through orientation at TCU. It's nobody's second time going through frog camp at TCU. So you're sort of all in the same boat. And I hope that that gives people some um, semblance of comfort and confidence coming into the process. Um, okay, so we're we're almost at time. Um, and so I really just wanted to thank you for being with me tonight. This The hour flew by, didn't it, Aaron? I was just literally about to say that. It flew by, man. Wow. I know. We'll have to do it again sometime. Um, I did want to share with everybody that, again, we're going to be doing our session next month, always the first Wednesday of, uh, of every month. We're going to be doing it on housing. So we're very excited to talk about that. Because the housing questionnaire opens on May 1st, we figured that's a good time to do it. And I'm going to tell you this right now. If you're planning to come to TCU, just because it opens on May 1st does not mean you need to complete it on May 1st. You have until June 10th to complete that, which is why we want to have that um, conversation in early May so that any questions you have about housing can be answered. But also, it's not just for students who have committed to TCU. It's for anybody who's even thinking about TCU. We're going to talk about um, everything that has to do with housing. So um, we look forward to joining you there. We have lots of admission programs that occur virtually and on campus. So please make sure to check out our website for all of the visit opportunities. We want to see you. Um, I also want to thank a couple of people who you don't currently see, but have been working feverishly behind the scenes. Rob Berline, Amy Peterson, and Liz Rainwater. They are awesome. They're with us every month and they really make this thing go. So thanks to all of you. If you have any follow-up questions for us in the Office of Admission, you can always email us at frogmail um, at tcu.edu. That's F-R-O-G-M-A-I-L at tcu.edu. Um, you have that information on your screen. Aaron, what's the what's the email address for your office if people have questions that directly pertain to to your world? For sure. So if it's um if it's about Frog Camp, then you can email us at TCU Frog Camp um, at tcu.edu, and we should be able to get anything. And then I believe that if you check the orientation website, they've got some stuff. But here we all communicate with each other to make sure that if it's a question for whoever that we'll get it so no worries we'll get you taken care of we promise i cannot wait to see um our new students when they come to frog camp um and to frogs first all of those pieces when you see me say hi i'll be the one with the big hair and the smile <laughs> <laughs> i love it i'll be the one with no hair and the smile. <laughs> Have a great night, it. everybody. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wilson. Always great to see you. I'll see you on campus probably tomorrow. For sure. <laughs> Take For it sure. easy, everyone. Go Frogs. Bye. Go Frogs.